Okay, hello everyone. My, my name is uh, Timo Soinen. I'm the CEO of Small Giant Games. Uh, we are a small but mighty mobile, mobile games company based right here in Helsinki. Um, we're a bunch of industry veterans um, and pioneers of free-to-play uh, with world-class game development and design uh, talent. And we obviously all share a passion for games. Uh, we as a company completed our second round of financing about a month ago. We have raised an, uh, on the ballpark of $4.5 million dollars in total for the company and uh, sort of the exciting time is approaching. We are sort of in the final stretches of uh, uh, delivering our first game. Um, uh, we at Small Games, we focus on creating beautiful and deeply engaging uh, uh, tablet games with character-driven uh, features and obviously multiplayer, which is in the, in the DNA. Uh, a lot of the team members have background in Haber Hotel, so we've done uh, a lot of work back in the day uh, when free-to-play was not very popular uh, and good stuff. And I would like to take this opportunity to actually share a couple of uh, uh, learnings. Um, how did we set out to create a very differentiated game? Uh, and also, you know, there are a lot of companies here looking for funding. That what, uh, what are the couple of points, pointers that I'd like to give regarding raising funding for, for a small studio? Um, so, obviously, the first uh, question was that what kind of game should we build? Uh, and uh, there were a couple of theses that we set out to do. And the first one was, let's really generally try to find a subgenre or, or um, a space where, which is not really dominated by the, the big giants. Because it's, it's, it's pretty stupid as a small studio to try to go head on with some of the big giants out there. Um, and, and also, we, we didn't want to end up as being the company number 757, creating a Candy Crush copy or a variation or a Clash of Clans type of game, for that matter. We wanted to go out and do something else, because we think that in, in this super competitive gaming world, you have to differentiate creating something distinctive. Uh, then, obviously, we also set out to do something that uh, create a game that could serve as a platform for future games from the conceptual point of view, sort of leveraging that if it becomes a very big success, but also what I call um, a category uh, sort of metrics or mechanics expansion point of view, so that if we crack, uh, we create a secret recipe, then that would carry on and we could actually variate the theme and create a serious games based on the, on the mechanics themselves. Then, of course, uh, it was really all about the, the creative ideas. We had a couple of really interesting creative ideas, that, you know, and then try to find the best possible fit with those existing ideas. So that's, that was like a starting point. And what we then started to do is, obviously, how did we actually decide on the type of game and that we, we are now working and soon launching? Um, the, the first one was really incredible hard work. We probably analyzed in, in the ballpark of 100 games inside out. Deep, played them a lot, you know, analyzed them, you know, what works, what, what are the mechanics, what works, what doesn't work, what are the core loops, what are the features missing, what we would do differently, and so systematically combing, combing them through, um, uh, and, and just building that sort of a, a game inside, if you like. The second idea area was also building the, the what, what I call the industry inside a little bit. So we talked to a lot of colleagues, and in Helsinki we have a luxury of actually sharing a lot of information. We had good, good friends from other companies sparring us. We used some experts to actually validate and learn uh, about the games themselves. Uh, and then really looking at industry metrics, you know, leading articles, and trying to sort of picture a place that where, would be a good position for us as a company, as a small team, to be at. And then, uh, obviously, uh, fine-tuning the, uh, the, the chosen creative uh, against the learnings that we see, so, you know, you know, how, how would that fit the, the learnings? And then, obviously, the last point was very, very obvious, that incredible amount of work going to sort of different kinds of prototyping, testing different kinds of control mechanisms, game mechanics, progression, doing some balancing, going back to the drawing board, discarding something. Um, and we even at the very late stage of the project did some massive changes, which is typically a no, no, don't do it. But we decided to do it, and the verdict is still out whether that was a smart thing to do or not. Um, you'll see that in a second. Uh, and then uh, we decided as an outcome of this, we decided to focus on what we called casual action -based games, uh, based games, and uh, really tried to take them to a new level by combining 
uh, stunning graphics, uh, uh, you know, very rich character design, uh, adding the free-to-play mechanics in this genre, which to our big surprise, we found out that many games, very successful games, had not done a very good job in, in that area. And then also, we, we were quite stunned to see that multiplayer features were quite, quite sort of stunningly also not, not there in many games. So we decided let's, let's add that as well. Um, and then the first game um, is really, <sighs> sorry, let me just go back a little bit. Oops, here we go. So the first game is, is a completely new type of flying game, which provides a new, so let's say, completely new angle to, let's say, traditional endless runner type of games or physics-based games. So it's a bit of an open world. Um, uh, it, it, it creates a unique experience to the traditional genre. Um, we have a very beautiful game combining 2D and 3D uh, graphics in, a, in an innovative way. Um, we've also spent a lot of time in designing the characters that's really detailed and uh, from, a, from, a, from the actual execution point, of, but also from a story point of view. And then also adding the asynchronous multiplayer mode to the game as well. And then a uh, few words before going to the actual game and showing what the game looked like and what it is. A um, few points about the financing. Obviously, this is critical for any small and upcoming studio. That how do you actually crack that, get some fuel? Um, especially if you want to raise the money before you actually get the, 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 the first game out. So, you know, obviously, very important is to have a very clear and differentiated positioning for the game itself, but also for the company. Um, and you really have to spend some time on that. Um, and second, you know, sort of connected to that is that you have to have a believable long-term objective and a plan as to how to achieve that. Uh, and, you know, people will grill you on that, and that, that needs to be there as a, as a nice packaged story. Um, and then, obviously, we had a luxury of, of having a very high-quality team basically covering all areas of the game, game business, you know, from the commercial side to the development server side, client side, you know, game design. So that was, that was important. And I, I encourage that, you know, the small teams to actually try to fill those gaps and have, or have a very solid plan before you start raising money. Um, and then, of course, having a very high quality uh, playable prototype definitely helps. In our case, it actually helped us to validate the story and what we're trying to do. Um, and then, you know, having a good command of the game metrics so that you can actually create a believable business model of the game and you can actually talk about it intelligently is just something that I think, you know, it is, uh, you know, uh, definitely expected. And the last but not least is that, you know, someone has to be sacrificed so on the altar. So, uh, and, and you either, either the CEO or one of the founders will have to vanish from the planet Earth and basically dedicate, you know, X, X amount of time, maybe even many, many months to, to get the funding done. And, you know, all of my colleagues in other companies have said the same thing, that it, it, it is really a demanding job to do it, do it right. And you should sort of budget for that um, um, as a team. But now, uh, let's take a look at the, the game first. Uh, um, Oddwing, Oddwing's Escape is a, is a fun and exciting rescue story where you, uh, um, you, you try to rescue your friends from the uh, uh, test laboratory, laboratory of an evil rooster professor who's captured all kinds of poor animals and birds into the lab and doing some evil testing in order to learn to fly himself. And the first character, Frankie, escapes from the lab and his mission is to fly as far as possible to collect coins and resources to rescue all of the friends from captivity. And here are a couple of screenshots uh, before I actually show you the, the, the uh, trailer of the game. So here are a couple of, uh, couple of screenshots. Here, these are the captive uh, friends, some of them, uh, and these are the actual screenshots from the game. But let's take a look at the sneak preview of Oddwing's Escape.
Okay, thank you very much.